Hi, welcome to Black Magic Design at IBC 2018. My name is Craig Heffernan, Technical Sales Director for EMEA, and we'd like to talk to you about Black Magic Raw. So Blackmagic RAW for us is a revolutionary way of working both in camera and in Resolve with RAW files. And a way of bridging that difficulty that many people have been put off of working with RAW files due to their file size demands, the capacity demands and storage in camera, or some of the time and the concentration required of working with RAW in post-production. So Blackmagic RAW really improves on the way that we've handled RAW in camera previously. So today our cinema cameras have used Cinema DNG, which is really just a pixel dump of information into a container that then relies on a debayering process and the color process in DaVinci Resolve. And that has complications in terms of both file size in camera and in media, and time required and some expertise in understanding the resolve and the processes. The image quality and the output is never a question, but the way that that has to be handled has been something of a barrier for people to move beyond, say, ProRes 10-bit that we've offered and the quality of ProRes and 422HQ or 444, but really trying to get people into using RAW formats. Blackmagic RAW answers and addresses that, but being a, more, a lot more efficient codec, improving the quality, but also keeping data rates and, and giving us options in the camera that really will appeal to people that want to get into RAW and processing, but without having those overheads in data size or taking lots of time in post-production to handle that RAW and process it the way we do with Cinema DNG. Well, Cinema DNG is going to remain in the cameras and that will be an option for people if they have a workflow and a, and a pipeline for delivery that they understand and work in that space. But Blackmagic RAW for us really improves on the quality and the efficiencies of RAW in post-production without really compromising any of that quality. So the codec itself is a 12-bit non-linear codec. So we still have that ability of 16-bit linear down in the same way that the Cinema DNG files work. But likewise, it's been designed with the Ursa Mini Pro 4.6K sensor to work in the profile of that sensor. So we're actually getting cleaner, sharper, better looking images and getting a stop of extra range down in the shadows with Blackmagic RAW. And when you put the camera either into three to one or into the constant quality Q0 settings, it's comparable to RAW, but with all the advantages and the efficiencies the codec offers in post and then also with the demosaic and the partial system we have built into the camera. We're really creating faster ways for people to work around, but not making any compromises in the quality of the camera at all. No, it's not a denoising process. It's more that Blackmagic RAW is designed around the profile of the sensor, particularly now our, our 4.6K sensor, so that it's actually a cleaner, nicer image coming from that sensor immediately into Blackmagic RAW rather than having any processing on it. And then likewise, remember, it's, it is a 12-bit file from 16-bit linear, so you still have all the control. It is a raw file. It's not clipped in that nature, so you can still process and work with it the way you'd want to in post-production. Yeah, you should. It's a, it's, a, it's a much more dynamic, modern codec. It's optimized for AVX, AVX2, SSE. It's designed within performance levels of the, the, the structures for OpenCL, for CUDA, for Apple Metal. And the fact that it's a single video file rather than a range of image sequences that we had with Cinema DNG previously means that it's a much faster codec in post-production. So therefore, will behave quicker or give the ability to work in maybe not as such high CPU intensive processes or demanding the most high-powered machines or GPUs inside your workstations. So today at IBC on the first day, we've made available the Cinema Camera Update version 6. So that brings Blackmagic RAW to Ursa Mini Pro 4.6K for customers to try, see what they think of this codec and then work with it with DaVinci Resolve 15.1 that's announced today as well. And then we're going to work to put the product into the new Pocket Cinema Camera 4K in due course. After that, we'll need to take a look at what other existing cameras from the Blackmagic Cinema range are available and what we can do with those and what support is, is possible in the future. The sidecar is a metadata file that is an advanced 
metadata system that we've introduced with Blackmagic RAW. Um, as with most camera formats, metadata in camera is added to that file to be taken into post-production. And that provides us exposure, frame rate, or camera note information about what was happening in the camera at that time. The sidecar file is a way for us to update and modify the metadata within that system. It's also dynamic, and what will happen within the Blackmagic RAW codec is this information is looked at by DaVinci Resolve when it decodes the Blackmagic uh, RAW file, and it uses that information to then present the color profile or the exposure values that you had within the camera at that time. There's a couple of different things we can do with that though. DaVinci Resolve has a new Blackmagic RAW control. And first of all, you could decide actually just to ignore that metadata that's inside the camera and create new sidecar metadata. So that might be a change to ISO or exposure and making decisions about exposure in post. And because it's a RAW file, you're able to do that and have that information available. Or it might be that going through the post-production process, more information is needed to be added to that metadata. So Resolve, again, will allow you to go into the metadata file and update the sidecar. And then through the collaborative workflow or through post-production processes, that sidecar file follows the video file and makes sure all the relevant information about what that file contains goes with that video all the way through the post-process. Yes, you can. So we have clip-based metadata that you could change, and that's easy to see in Resolve UI right now, 15.1. But you can also open the sidecar file in human-readable format, say in text edit, and then you'll be able to visually see how that time is working and maybe your ISO settings. And you could change the ISO, for example, and put in time code information so it could vary over a clip frame by frame. So there's two options based on the compression in Blackmagic RAW. Um, first of all, we have a ratio-based compression scale, which goes through the camera and provides a 3 to 1, 5 to 1, 8 to 1, or 12 to 1 compression. And obviously, as you go through that range, you're increasing your data storage for time. So as a rough guide, a 256 gig media card at 12 to 1 compression will last you around 90 to 100 minutes. But if you go down to 3 to 1 and you're really improving the quality with less compression, that's going to drop down to around half an hour. And that's really equivalent, say, like a ProRes 422 HD. But bearing in mind, this is a 12-bit nonlinear file. So we're having the benefits of RAW with a manageable data size. The other option is something called constant quality. This is where we set a kind of base level of not allowing the compression to become too aggressive, but having adaptability in the way that the codec can behave. So with Q0 as an option, for example, this is close to as, as lossless in the visual processing as the camera as possible. It will allow a certain set rate of recording, but if a pixel or some frame information needs to be retained, it will increase the compression based on a frame by frame basis. And then Q5 comes in, which is slightly more higher compression, sort of equivalent to maybe seven to one and above, where it behaves in a certain way, but always tries to keep a base layer. But rather than being constant bit rate, allows it to vary a little bit where needed frame by frame. Well, ProRes RAW is still something we're going to look at and consider. If we think there's customs out there that will benefit from having that option in the camera and there's workflows that will be supported with ProRes RAW, then certainly something we'd like to look at. Um, we do think that Blackmagic RAW offers something for us that gives us the best quality out of our cameras to date and gives people access to the higher quality sort of RAW processes with those efficiencies we've spoken about in post-production.